Hey guys, I'm Marissa and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you some more advanced Excel tricks of how to use Excel for your budget. I actually have my own budget templates for sale on my Etsy shop for $5. If you're interested in getting the budget template that I will be using, you can check that out in my Etsy shop down below. I get a lot of questions about using the budget template. It's pretty easy, but some people are wanting to do a few more advanced things with Excel. And the budget that I have on my Etsy shop is a little bit more simplified for people who maybe aren't as familiar or comfortable with Excel. But there are a few tricks that I use and a few formulas that have made a huge difference in being able to reconcile my budget very quickly. So I wanted to show you some of those tips and tricks if you're interested in advancing your Excel knowledge and also making it work really well in your budget. But before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new. So here we are in Excel, and this is the exact template that you can get from my Etsy shop. Again, it's only $5, and I have entered in a couple things for this template just to get us started. And this is just a mock budget that I've made up, so this isn't actually our budget, but I do have a bunch of budgeting videos. If you want to check them out, you can check out them out up here in the link above. But the first thing that I wanted to do in this budget template, we do not have debt and the budget template does come with a debt tracking section, but I'm going to get rid of that. And the easy way to do that, you just click highlight this top row and drag it down to the row that you want to get rid of. And then you can just go up here and hit delete. And the one thing that's going to look a little funky, but don't be alarmed. It then says, er, there's a reference error. And so if you just click into the cell and go up to where it says ref and exclamation point, just delete out all of that and you can just hit enter and then it'll be okay. And then you can go ahead and drag it over to the cell next to it. And then same thing here, we're just going to delete out the stuff that is the error code and hit enter and then drag that over as well. And that's the easy way to just get rid of that de debt section if you do not have debt. And then make sure that you're just always clicking save when you um, are working in the template. So in the template, I use the colorful part to be able to be my dashboard and show me how I'm doing with my expenses. But the part on the left is where I track all of my expenses. And so every single Sunday, I sit down and reconcile my budget and I enter in all the income and expenses that we've incurred for the week. And I enter them all in here, including the date, the category, the vendor, and the amount, and the account that it came from, whether that's checking or a credit card or savings or you know whatever that may be. And then I make sure that I update it to my dashboard board and an easy way that you can do this and I've showed in my like budget in my budget tutorial is you can filter all of these so you can go um, let's add let's add one more grocery item here groceries Kroger will spend $50 Okay, so if I wanna see, if I have a full list of all my expenses and I wanna see how much I spent, the easy way to do that on groceries, you can just go up to this, go up to the filter option here, this just little drop down, and you can deselect all and then select just groceries and it'll show you all of your groceries. So then you can highlight these items and it shows down here at the bottom that the sum is $113. So we will come out of that here We'll select all again, and then I can go over to groceries and, and type 113. So that's one way that you can track your expenses. But here's the way that I do it, and it's a little more complex, and that's why I don't have it hard keyed into this template because I don't want anyone to mess it up. But if you want to use this method and you feel more comfortable using Excel, then you can totally do this. Okay, so instead of filtering and seeing how much the total is, you can use a sum if function. And this is my, probably my favorite function in Excel, it's awesome. So you just hit equals, and then you type sum if, and here's the function, sum if. So you can double click, okay, and I clicked twice, so it shouldn't have come up like that. It'll just come up like this, sum if, and then the parentheses. And here it shows you kind of the language that you need to follow when typing out this uh, formula. So sum if it's first wanting the range. And so the range is going to be under the category part here. So what you can click B2, so right under where it says category, click and then drag down to however many expenses you're gonna have for the month. And so I just drag far enough down that I'm gonna catch everything. 158 transactions is a little much, but we're, we'll know that we get everything that way. And then you wanna hit a comma, cause it's telling you down here the formula that you need to use. And then we have the criteria. So the criteria here, we are wanting to add up 
all of our grocery transactions and so if this category section we want it if if it says grocery we want it to add so we've already selected the range for the category section and now we wanted to say if it says grocery so we're going to say groceries then comma we want it to add up where it says amount so if this section says groceries we wanted to add this this section so just kind of read it like a sentence here so i'm going to do the same thing just drag down pretty far and it went down way too far that's fine even though it went down further that'll be okay because that's going to catch all the transactions we're going to have through the month you also can um hard key this in so you we could say d 158 to have it match where it says B. And then we just close the parenthesis at the end and hit enter. And as you can see here, it populated with a number. It's saying if this column has the word groceries, then add this column. That's what this formula is telling you to do. So the one funky thing here, I like to enter my transactions in as a negative if it's an expense and a positive if it's income. That way I can tell if it's income or expense. So when you are adding up the groceries here, it now shows a negative amount for groceries, but we want it to be positive so it will reflect what we've budgeted for groceries. So you can just go up to the formula and in between the equal sign and the sum if, you can put a negative and then it'll make that number a positive, so then it'll match with your budget. Okay, so now with that we did that once, that was kind of a lot of work, and so that's why I don't do this for everyone's budget, and because you need to hard key in what word you want it to pick up. So I just make sure that I use the same word here, so here I have it typed out as groceries, I make sure that I use that in my category here as groceries. If you use the wrong word, even if you misspell one or two letters, it's going not going to pick it up. So if you use this method, you need to be really careful and make sure that you're typing in correctly the category name. And so that's why I don't have this for my normal budget template. But if you are an advanced Excel user and you want to try this out, then definitely go ahead. So one way that you can make this a little bit easier on yourself is that you can drive the formula down there's a little square here at the bottom and as you can see if you drag down it'll fill the rest of the cells but here's a little trick we just did this incorrectly and I'm gonna show you how to do it right if you just drag it down here this next cell here for gas when you click on this it started with the row below the one that we were using last time and we want to make sure that the rows are all the same for all of our expenses so I'm going to go highlight these here and delete them just so they're out of the way and the way that you make sure that it's always going to be start on B2 because we want it to start at the very first line of our transactions is you put an e, you put a money sign in between the letter and the number of the cell and we want to do that for all of our cell ranges here so now we have money signs for them all and then we can drag down and it's going to populate here and you can like look at this one so it's still kept here at B2 through D2, which is great. But the other funny thing is that it, dra it dragged down where we said groceries, so you'll need to go in and manually change this to instead, instead of groceries, say gas. And as you can see, this now just populated with $55, and that's how much we had at, in gas. And then this one we'll want to change here to entertainment. So just make sure that you're using exactly the words that you have typed in this category section. You have to type them exactly the same into the formula and use them exactly in the category for your expense tracking. So let me finish doing all of this and then we'll get back to the next tip. Okay, and then we also wanna do this formula again for our income side. And this we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna do sum if, choose that function. And then the range, again, is going to do the same thing. We'll choose this range. And how I have it labeled is, and you need to make sure you use the quotes, payday, Marissa, end quote, add the comma, and then we wanted to add this amount. Okay, and I would suggest I made this a little bit shorter, but I think we used 158 for the other ones. I would make sure that you use the same range for all of your um, formulas to make sure that you're catching all of those expenses that you enter in. Okay, and I'm also going to add the money sign so that I can drag it down. And this one we're going to keep positive because I had entered in my income as a positive, so now they match as positive. So that's how you do it, and then we'll just drag it down 
and we'll update this one below so that instead of saying payday marissa it says payday jacob so it'll update whenever i enter in his income and so now that I have all of my other formulas completed, I can add in more transactions and have them automatically populate onto this dashboard. So I can go 810 car insurance, make sure I spell that right. <laughs> and that'll be $150 and checking. Gosh. And there you go, automatically populated here on my dashboard be $150 in my actuals for car insurance. So this is a super easy way to have everything populate on your Excel document. Um, but again, just need to be careful of making sure that your ranges on the formula is far enough down and far enough up that you're catching all of those transactions and also making sure that you're spelling everything correctly when you're typing in words to the category and also the words that you're using to pull um, in that formula. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you guys is in the sinking funds section. So if we, at the end of the month, decide that we are putting in exactly what we um, planned for our savings account, we can manually key in the actuals because I'm not spending any money, I'm just moving it into savings. And so here in the, our spreadsheet, it'll show, since this is our first month, it'll show a zero beginning balance, right? And so it'll show the ending balance here. So now to look at how we're going to budget for next month. So you can easily just take this tab and let's make a copy. We can say move to end and create a copy. So this will be September 2019 and it has now copied over all of our formulas. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of our transactions. So those are all gone. And then what you can do, and we'll delete these actuals that we're putting into savings. So now that we have the savings item area, we want to be able to track month to month our beginning and ending balances. And so now that we have a new month starting, we can go ahead and record our beginning balance. And the way that you do that is you can just click the equals button and then go to your last month's tab and select the ending balance cell. Click that and then hit enter and you now have your beginning balance entered in for how much that fund has. And this time, instead of using the money signs, we can just drag down because it's going to catch each cell from the last tab in August here. It's just going to drag down to catch all of those. So that is now our beginning balance. And as you can see, if we put in our actuals later on, if we say 1500, it'll update to show our beginning balance and our ending balance. And so then each month as you go on, you can just copy over those beginning and ending balances from month to month to be able to track how your savings items are going. So that is all I have for this video with a little bit of advanced Excel tutorial on how to use Excel for your budget. Don't forget, if you're wanting to get my budget template, you can pick it up from my Etsy shop for $5. I have a link down below. And this is how you can customize it to your liking. And I definitely love this sum if function, but it's something to be cautious about and make sure that you're using correctly. And so if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos and leave me a comment down below and let me know if you enjoy using Excel for your budget. And I will look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Bye.